Okay, let's get ready for action. Why hello viewers, and welcome to another video. In this video, we will be showing to you a very special recording machine. Now this is Vice, it's not a tape recorder, sorry to say. And the device is not a wire recorder either. I'm sorry to say. But the device you're about to see is none other than a Dictaphone Dict Belt Travel Master Dictation Machine. Here you can see a very special recording device. This device is from about probably 1962 or 1963. This device uses a very special kind of format. Here displayed is a blank dictabelt. You can see that it's a shiny plastic material, transparent. Here displayed is a recorded ducta belt. Notice the difference? That has grooves like that of a vinyl record. The ducta belt format is a lot like and almost identical to the phonograph and records audio as vibrations by embossing the vibrations onto this plastic surface making a groove a lot like a phonograph. The phonograph of course cuts out swarf out of wax but the dictabelt merely embosses the grooves so there's no worry of dirty dusty swarf. This format was popular for voice dictation back in the day, used by doctors, I would imagine, and people working in office environments to record dictation, which would then be sent to a secretary to be transcribed onto paper. The machine is also known to be used by the President John F. Kennedy. Not this particular, I mean, one in my collection, obviously, but the format. This unit here was acquired on eBay. And I know I've had it for a while, and I'm just now making an official presentation of it because of my idiocy. But I hope you'll bear with me. This device has operating instructions. Travel Master Charging Instructions. To obtain the maximum performance in life from the nickel cadmium batteries which power your, your travel master, you should avoid charging continuously. They are being charged at all times when charger is connected. A, sing, a, a simple procedure to adopt is as follows. Step 1. Put machine on charge overnight, 14 to 16 hours. 2. Disconnect charger. 3. 
start using a new dictapack of, of 10 belts. And four, when using the 10th belt, start over at step one. Now here's the interesting part. When using the 10th belt. It must be informed to all of you watching this video that the dicta belt has a rather short recording time per belt of only 15 minutes per dicta belt. The belt can be unloaded simply by sliding it off the carriage like that. Of course, since these belts have um, been managed to being stored inside the leather case of this machine, they've gotten kind of compacted and smushed. And uh, although they're still usable, the machine uh, with a rubber drive belt on there tends to not get the most uh, strong traction in the world. So uh, sometimes it tends to have wow during those parts on the belt. And also sometimes the belt stops altogether and I have to kind of give it a little push. But at some point in time, whenever I get around to it, I'll order another belt for this machine. There's an interesting thing to notice with this machine. And that is, you might be wondering, well, where do the batteries go? Let's say you've acquired one of these devices and you're saying, where is the battery compartment? Well, the batteries are stored in a very interesting manner. Originally, the batteries would have one, there'd be one set of batteries inside this cylinder and another set of batteries inside this cylinder. Of course, NICAD rechargeable cells. Whenever I first acquired this machine on eBay, to my surprise, the device actually managed to operate off of the original cells after receiving a charge from the charger. Although, the old cells, even though they could hold a charge, they were not able to supply sufficient current for the machine to operate at a high enough voltage without tripping the dead battery alarm, which was emitting an annoying buzz. So, I've since uh, put some new nickel metal hydride smaller batteries inside just this cylinder and rewired it so the power is taken off of only this cylinder. I left the old batteries inside this cylinder partially so that the weight will, that there'll still be some weight to the cylinder. So now let's load a dicta belt onto the machine. Something I want to mention is very important for viewers who might possibly get one of these machines into their collection. And that is the interlock mechanism to prevent the um, needle assembly from moving undesirably. If you release this button, you'll see the black button comes out and this can glide along. When you want it to stay in place, push that black button in with it all the way to the left. Otherwise, you'll learn the hard way, like I did, the violence with, this, which, which, with which this thing can fall going whenever you freaking forget to do that. So, let's turn the device on. You can see the motor starts spinning and the belt starts spinning. On the remote mic, if you put it into stop, you'll hear this alarm. This is the same alarm that comes on whenever the battery is low and needs to be charged. I knew page two has to have something. And honestly, I'll take anything. 
I'll go to someone's house to get some fries at this point. Um, so I, uh, I show up this place, and it's called Lily Hassan. I walk to the front door, and there's like a family of Asians there. Like, it's just kids playing. And, and I walk in, and I'm thinking, I just start laughing, because I'm like, I'm really not bad. And, and, and I said, I can't get stuff in a bad taste. I'm like, so I... Anyway, the machine itself was made in Great Britain. The microphone that came with mine is made in Western Germany. Let's make a recording on this machine. Notice there's two switch positions on here, N and I. In N mode, which I call normal mode, you have a certain lower range of sensitivities adjustable with the talk volume control. In I mode, the sensitivity is boosted. But if you want to play back properly through the microphone slash speaker, you want it in normal mode. I am now making a recording on the blank portion of this dictabelt. I've stopped it with the remote switch. I want to show the little meter move. Test, hello, hello. Can you see the little meter move to the sound? Not very well. You should now see the little meter move to the audio. As I adjust the volume of the recording, yeah, you can see the, see the meter move for some reason. Let's put it on eye mode. Now the sensitivity is boosted in eye mode. We turn the volume all the way down and we're still picking up sound. This is not a good demonstration. You turn it all the way up, it puts some annoying noise on the, on the recording. So I turn it down to 6, which seems like a good level. I like to record my level, my recordings nice and strong onto this for good loud playback. Chase! During my recording, the belt came to the end because I was recording late on a belt. Now that we've made a recording, let's show the machine, or better yet, hear the machine, playback. To put it back to normal. So I dropped down a six, which seems like a good level. Before we hear the shout outs, let's hook up the telephone pickup coil for better sound quality transfer. The telephone pickup coil is now being used. Listen to the sound of the motor. That motor noise was picked up inductively. Now listen to playback from the Travel Master. I'm not normal mode. Running it in high mode. Running it in normal mode again. I'm now making a recording on the blank portion of this dictapelt. You can now see the little meter move to the audio. As I adjust the volume of the recording, you know, can see the meter move for some reason. Let's put it on high mode. Now the sensitivity is boosted in eye mode. And we're stacking the volume all the way down, and we're stacking that sound. This is not like a demonstration. So we have to put some annoying noise on the, on the recording. So I turn it down to six, which seems like a good level. I like to record my level, my recordings nice and strong onto this for good loud playback. Okay, I want to have a couple shout outs, and hopefully the speed does not go too crazy during this time. I want to give a couple of shout outs to a couple of my co-workers, people who are at the company working with me who have 
uh, greatly uh, added enjoyment to the day with their hilarious personalities and witty, hilarious ways. The people I want to give the shout-outs to is a man named Chase Bretain and Luke McComb. They specifically requested that I would shout out to them in the video, and I'm very glad to do so. And what better way to shout out to them than via the 1962 or 1963 vintage British-made dictaphone travel master dictabelt uh, recorder. I'm so used to saying the phrase tape recorder, I had to kind of stop myself. Anyway, Luke and Chase. You can hear this recording. Please comment. I hope you enjoy this shout out to Luke and Chase. Test one, two, three, four. Tell me, what is this machine? This is a dictaphone travel master of the 1960s, records on the dictabelt, similar to a record player, like a vinyl record. It also goes along, and the needle tracks along. Wow, that is very impressive. Where did you acquire this? eBay. eBay, I see. Was it very expensive? Forty dollars. Wow, that's more than a video game. It doesn't matter. This thing is one of my prized possessions. Ah, so like an artifact, you could say. Yes, and to me it was a steal. Ah, steal. You know, it's not good to steal a Ricky. I know. <laughs> a Ricky? You know the pod. Yeah, bye, bro. <laughs> <laughs> And finally got some of the units to work. What? I'm just here. Just here. to I bet that's all overdriven. And I'll have to record it all again. You see... Okay, so this machine also has a leather case. And I'll show you the leather case. The Dicta belt machine would go inside there. The charge, the charger, and the mic would go in there. I'll show you its little charger. Yeah, if you haven't already noticed, I, <laughs> you won't believe it, and you'll probably be angry at me for not making a video of it earlier. I got this machine in 2015, and I'm not making a video of it until 2017. Here's the charger with its special plug. Even the charger is made in Great Britain, but of course for American export, and 120 volts. Improved operation was received whenever I cleaned the contacts for the mic. That is, scraped away oxidation. I hope you enjoyed the video of this machine. Now, I have made other videos of this machine that are not on YouTube, but I was not satisfied with how they came out. Matter of fact, I made a 45 minute presentation on this machine and only nine minutes or so of it was saved because Windows Movie Maker experienced some error, which really made me angry. That was back in 2015. I could show snippets of that video. I also made a video of where I was working on the battery, but that I'll probably upload as a separate video. That was also back in 2015. 
At some point I also made a video where I showed recording of music and playing it with hook, electrically hooking up the outputs, I mean hooking up the speaker area. There was a heck of a lot of wow and flutter going on and craziness with the recording, but I may put a snippet of that for a slightly better showing of how it records music. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video of the either 1962 or 1963 vintage Dictaphone Travel Master, Dictabelt Recorder, made in Great Britain. <laughs> Microphone clipped and shirt productions presents. Hello there. You've either watched through the entire intro or you have cut to the chase. Either way, welcome to this video. It is 6.42 a.m. October 10th, 2015. It is simultaneously 6.39 a.m. I have more belief in the 6.39 coming out of my laptop clock than I do coming out of my old Windows XP's. I literally have stayed up all night long. Even though it feels similar to a Friday night, unfortunately, it is now Saturday as opposed to Friday, which means more of the weekend has been used up, you know, of its allotment of precious free time. So we will now open up the microphone and show the honors. You won't believe what I just found. Let's see if it might possibly have automatic focus. Huh, I put it in black and white. I, mean, I still have to adjust it manually too. Here's a German made microphone module. Look at the classic vintage electronics in this thing. And that vintage transistor. Undoubtedly germanium. Amazing. Any interested parties out there, the transistor's part number is OC3054. Difference in sound. A tail of the screwdriver. Screwdrivers are very useful tools. They can be used to turn scre screws in either clockwise or counterclockwise direction in order to screw or unscrew a screw. 16. I will read to you a random school time note report written on November the 16th, 2014. Imagine bonus week at the office. Today's date is the 16th of November. 2014. 
This is a Business Week little office notepad accessory combo. This little set with such novelty items as a tape dispenser with inbuilt pencil sharpener and scissors with inbuilt ruler. This is probably from the 1990s. What about 0 0.3? A second grade set from August 23rd, 1999 will be copied in my 1999 handwriting style. Steno, Aug, 23, copy, list 1, spelling, return, practice, making these, and then letter is scribbled out. Making a recording. I'm making a recording. The thing set to normal. The recording level at near 8. I'm speaking probably three inches away from the microphone of the dictaphone travel master. Dictabout machine. I am making a recording. Well, it's hooked up to the computer. Directly. This is the Dictaphone Synthesized Voice speaking to you. Recorded on the Dictaphone Travel Master Recorder. This is the Dictaphone Synthesized Voice speaking to you. Recorded on the Dictaphone Travel Master Recorder. to sitting in the same position for many years at a time they have kind of gotten warped to this particular shape but they are still usable the unit cannot be ran if the microphone is unplugged turn it on and nothing happens the unit must have the microphone plugged in for it to operate In playback or standby mode, as I'll call it, this meter, e sho this meter shows battery condition. Is it already going low? Because that's not good. Then, of course, you have playback level and record level. Because otherwise, and I've learned this the hard way, you pick the thing up and the thing's released and ooh, bam! Well, I hope you enjoyed the basic showing of the Dictaphone Travel Master Dictabelt Recorder. I will also be showing music recording quality as well. I have made an earlier video of this machine, but with lower quality camera and with not as good close-up shots and things like that and wanted to make yet another take on making a video of this recorder. Hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.